My name is Grace Dee. I'm a medical oncologist. And I'm Sai Indamori. I'm a, a, the chair of thoracic surgery at the Russell Park Comprehensive Cancer Center. And today we're going to ask and answer some questions, some common questions about lung cancer. <laughs> causes lung cancer, Dr. Yanomori. Okay. The, the most important cause of lung cancer is smoking uh, and tobacco use of any, any form, but primarily smoking. The second most common cause of lung cancer is asbestos, but there are other causes of lung cancer. Great. Right. So uh, environmental exposure to uh, inhaled carcinogens, pollutants. So one of the uh, unseen, unsmelled, uh, gas is uh, radon in the air that uh, is uh, tied and linked to uh, patients who may develop lung cancer even if they didn't have a substantial exposure to um, the traditional tobacco smoke. Um, there are also epidemiological studies suggesting that you know pollution in the air can be uh, linked to increased risk for lung cancer as well. And this is particularly important because we are seeing more and more patients with lung cancer who have never smoked. Correct. So, um, you know, radon and uh, air pollution are thought to be the culprits of uh, most of these cancers. So, can you get lung cancer from smoking marijuana? Uh, actually, I don't know about that. I think uh, the tie is not as high because uh, the, the classical um, association is with the uh, tar in, uh, in uh, tobacco smoke, uh, cigarettes. There are some studies suggesting that uh, the risk is not that high, uh, but what do you think? Well, I think the risk may actually come from what happens uh, uh, from people who smoke marijuana. A lot of them also tend to smoke cigarettes, so it's very difficult to tease out both causes. So what is the treatment for lung cancer, Dr. Yanomarie? You're so, an expert. <laughs> so the treatment for lung cancer primarily depends on the stage in which it's found. So if it's limited to a portion of the lung or limited to a particular area of the chest, and if the patient can tolerate surgery like the majority can, the treatment is, um, is primarily surgical. And the good thing about surgical treatment nowadays is it can be done minimally, minimally invasively in the majority of these patients. In fact, in over 90% of patients uh, operated at Russell Park, we offer minimally invasive surgery. If a patient cannot tolerate surgery for many medical conditions, then radiation uh, is an option, and we have new treatment modalities, uh, new radiation treatment modalities that actually make it uh, 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 very safe and very expedient. Now, once it's beyond the area, uh, in one particular area of the chest, that's when Dr. D and her team comes in. Right, so uh, in relation to this question about the treatment for lung cancer, it's a very simplified question because lung cancer is in fact uh, a conglomeration of multiple different cancers. Genetically, they're different. Uh, when you look at in, under the microscope, they also look different and they behave differently biologically. So uh, our treatments are nowadays tailored to our better understanding of the genetic underpinnings, biological underpinnings of what causes these cancers to grow and spread. So um, in summary, the available treatment options these days are, uh, you know, as Dr. Yandemarie said, if it's not um, surgically curable or curable with uh, radiation, uh, we use systemic therapies, meaning treatments that can circulate around the body. So they t tend to be tr the traditional chemotherapy or more nowadays because of the availability of target therapies, especially patients who don't smoke, there is a high proportion of patients who, whose cancer are um, due to uh, cancer genes that are uh, abnormally active, and so these can be um, tr prevent, uh, treated with uh, pills. Uh, another uh, emerging option, or actually uh, accepted uh, option nowadays, is immunotherapy, using the immune system to actually uh, fight the cancer, and there are med medications that try to uh, rev up and enhance the ability of the immune system to treat the uh, cancer, and we use a combination of these uh, in many cir circumstances. 
can non-smokers get lung cancer? Yes, as Dr. Yandu Murray uh, alluded to earlier, uh, unfortunately, we're seeing a, a trend of increasing uh, uh, rates of uh, cancers occurring in patients who actually never smoke. They live a healthy lifestyle. And as we um, kind of discussed earlier, um, some of the uh, hypothesis is that uh, environmental exposure to, you know, maybe radon or any of these air pollutants are um, uh, associated with why patients are getting uh, lung cancer even though they've never smoked. So what are the warning signs of lung cancer? So by the time patients become symptomatic of lung cancer, it's often quite late. But when they do become symptomatic, it's usually a repeated infection, um, coughing up blood, what's called hemoptysis, uh, losing weight. They can have bone pains uh, because of the cancer spreading to the bones. They can have headaches if it's spread uh, to the uh, brain. But the best stage in which to diagnose lung cancer is the stage when a patient does not have symptoms. Because often in that stage, it's treatable for cure. Um, but these are the common symptoms of lung cancer. Right, and unfortunately, that's why Dr. Yandamari said it's best to um, you know, treat patients when they don't have si signs and symptoms yet because uh, that generally means the cancer is uh, earlier stage. And that's why in the appropriate uh, population that we call high risk for developing lung cancer, mm -hmm. Dr. Yandamari's team, uh, they, we, um, you know, at Roswell, we have a lung cancer screening clinic. Uh, and not, not everybody is a candidate, but, uh, you know, if you are high risk, um, such as, uh, you know, smoking, smoking uh, pack year history, and, you know, age um, and other comorbidities, uh, that you look at risk assessment for having potential lung cancer deaths. Uh, when we calculate their risk, they may be candidates for um, uh, screening uh, approaches like CT scans, or even newer approaches uh, looking at blood tests that are still in research for early detection. That's right. And the advantage with the uh, uh, CT scan screening is that it is painless. It doesn't involve a biopsy or anything like that. It takes just a few minutes. Um, and the radiation dose involved with the screening CT scans is very, very, very low. So um, uh, all of these make screening for lung cancer fairly easy and uh, should be pursued more and more often.